Before we move on to proving some results about the order of elements in groups, let's make sure that we really understand the definition by going through a few more examples. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing this definition, and here's a quick look at the examples that we'll be going over today. We'll be finding the order of each of these elements in their respective groups. And of course, here is the definition of the order of an element in a group. The order of an element A is simply the least positive integer n so that a to the power of n is equal to the group's identity element. And of course, if there does not exist such a positive integer, we say that the element has order infinity. It doesn't matter how many times you compose it with itself, you're not going to get back to the identity. All right, here is our first example. The number 4 as an element of the additive group of integers mod 10. What is the order of 4? Well, here we're talking about addition, so instead of using this notation of 4 to the n, it would be more appropriate to use the notation of n times 4, because this is representing repeated addition. So how many times do we have to add 4 to itself to get to the identity, which is 0? That's the question. What's the smallest positive integer n so that this is equal to 0? Well, if we have 1 times 4, that's just going to be 4. If we have 2 times 4, that's going to be 8. Again, this is all mod 10. And then 3 times 4 is 12. Mod 10, that's 2. 4 times 4 is 16. Mod 10, that's 6. And then finally, 5 times 4 is 20 which mod 10 is equal to the identity of 0. So we saw 1 times 4, 2 times 4, 3 times 4, 4 times 4, and then 5 times 4. That was the least positive integer, 5, so that that number times 4 was the identity. And so the order of 4, which we can denote like this, is equal to 5 in this group. Next, let's find the order of 1 as an element of the multiplicative group of real numbers. This asterisk denotes that we are excluding 0, so we can consider this as a multiplicative group. And since we're talking about multiplication, we can use the multiplicative notation. And so we're asking, what is the least positive integer n so that 1 to the power of n is equal to the identity? What's the identity? Well, in this case, since we're talking about the multiplicative group of real numbers, the identity is 1. And so clearly, the order of 1 is 1. If we make this n equal to 1, well, that is the smallest positive integer, and it so happens that 1 to the 1 is equal to 1. So certainly, the order of 1, which we could also denote like this, as opposed to using that magnitude notation, the order of 1 in the multiplicative group of real numbers is equal to 1. Because 1 is the smallest positive integer such that when we raise 1 to that power, we get the identity, which is, in this case, 1. Saying 1 a lot makes that confusing, but let me know if you have any questions in the comments. In this next example, we're not removing 0 from the real numbers, and so we're talking about the additive group of reals, and we want to find the order of 1 in this group. So we're asking, what's the smallest positive integer n so that n times 1 is equal to the identity? In this case, since we're talking about addition, the identity is 0. And in this case, there is no positive integer n satisfying this equation. So there is certainly no smallest positive integer n satisfying this equation. If we take any positive integer n, well, that times 1 is just going to be n. It's never going to be zero. And so the order of one in the additive group of reals is infinite. All right, in the next example, we're considering this permutation that we're calling F from the symmetric group on four elements. I'll leave links in the description to my lessons introducing permutation groups and symmetric groups if you need a recap on this stuff. But remember, S4 is the group of all permutations on four objects, and the group operation here is function composition. So we're asking, how many times do we need to compose 
goes f with itself, which we could represent as f to the n. How many times are we going to have to compose this permutation with itself to get the identity permutation, which we could represent as e? If we compose f with itself a single time, let's see what's going to happen. The first instance of the permutation f would send 1 to 2, but then when we compose it with itself, that 2 would get sent to 3. So in total, 1 would get sent to 3. Similarly, the first instance of f would send 2 to 3. But then when we compose it with itself, that 3 would get sent to 1. So in total, 2 got sent to 1. Similarly, 3 would get sent to 1 and then get sent to 2 and then four would get sent to four, and then four would get sent to four again. And so four just maps to itself. This is what happens when we compose f with itself, which we might write as f to the two. So we're asking how many times do we need to compose f with itself to get back to the identity where none of the elements have actually moved at all. Having seen this example written out, I hope that you can confirm for yourself that the answer to this question is three because one will be sent to two by the first instance of f, but if we compose it with itself, that two will get sent to three, but if we compose it with itself a third time, the three will get sent back to one. In total, the one doesn't move at all. Similarly, the two would get sent to three, but then the three would get sent to one, but then in the third instance of f, the one would get sent back to two, and so the two hasn't changed at all. So if we raise f to the power of three, we are going to get the identity permutation. I'll leave it to you to write that out if you want to verify all of the details. In any case, we see that the order of this permutation f in the symmetric group on four elements is equal to three. 3 is the smallest positive integer, so that f to the 3 is equal to the identity permutation. All right, let's move on to the last example. In this example, we want to find the order of R2. This is a 180 degree rotation of a square. It's an element of the dihedral group D4. This is the group of all symmetries of a regular polygon with four sides, which of course is a square. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing the dihedral groups if you need a recap. I should also mention some authors would denote this dihedral group of symmetries on the square, the foregone, as D8 because it has eight elements, but I'm choosing to denote it as D4. Once again, in this group, the operation is composition. So we're asking how many times do we need to compose this rotation, R2, with itself to get back to the identity that hasn't moved the square at all. Let me make sure you see how this rotation works. It takes this first vertex and rotates it 180 degrees, right? So one ends up over there and the two ends up over here after the 180 degree rotation and the three ends up over there and so on. Put simply, each vertex shifts two vertices in the clockwise direction, like the four, one, two, it shifts to that top left corner. All right, let's try composing this rotation with itself and see what we get. The first instance of R2, we see just moves the square. We already wrote that, that's the definition of the rotation. But now what if we apply that rotation to the end result? So we're composing it with itself. We are doing a 180 degree clockwise rotation of this already rotated square. Well, if we do that, then let's focus on the one first. It's going to do a 180 degree rotation. It's going to move two vertices in the clockwise direction, and it's going to end up over here. Similarly, two is going to move two vertices in the clockwise direction. It's going to end up here and so on. You can see that we get back to the original square exactly. So two compositions, or rather two instances of this rotation, R2, so composing it with itself, has resulted in the identity permutation, or what we might call the identity symmetry of just picking the square up and putting it back down, but not actually moving it at all. So we could write that in the dihedral group D4, this 180 degree rotation raised to the power of 2 is equal to the 
identity. And so the order of this rotation in the dihedral group D4 is equal to 2. That's the smallest positive integer so that this rotation raised to the power of that integer will result in not having moved the square at all. And so there's a handful of examples of finding the order of elements in a group. And I hope they were helpful for making sure you understand what this definition really means. The order of an element A in a group G is just the least positive integer n so that a to the n equals the group g's identity element. And if there is no such positive integer n, then we say that the order of the element is infinite. Thank you very much for watching. If you find these lessons helpful, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description and that really helps me keep making these videos as high quality as possible and making as many of them as I can. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions.